Also, there's one more thing. If you have a moment, if you have enough time, we might uh, drop a bomb on people and see your thoughts on vitamin D because this is something that a lot of people, um, they, uh, they, you know, they ask about, you know, is this something you should uh, supplement if you're not getting enough of it? Um, it is a hormone that has a, you know, a very um, specific and important uh, biological effects in your body. But something that you pointed out was that, um, you know, we'll let you tell it, but that, that this may not be um, as, as straight cut and dry as just more vitamin D good. Uh, yeah. So can we just pause for a second? Yeah. So, so sorry about that. I'm actually at a, a sports medicine conference, our, our uh, annual conference, and uh, I've just ducked out for a session. I just had to answer a query. So, yeah, so the whole thing about vitamin D is this uh, mistake again of correlation and causation. And unfortunately, uh, I think a lot of people have fallen for the mistake of believing that correlation proves causation. Essentially, I believe vitamin D is very important up to a point for certain things, but not as important as a lot of people would make out. It's not a miracle cure for coronavirus, for example. So we know that if you don't have enough, you'll get bone disease, you'll get osteomalacia, you'll have impaired mineralization of bone, you'll get rickets and so on and so forth. And that clearly is going to be a problem. But, you know, if you've got, you know, a modicum of vitamin D levels, that's enough to prevent that. So then the question is, well, we notice that people, when they have high vitamin D levels, they tend to live longer. Therefore, that must prove that vitamin D is good for you, right? Well, not necessarily. So vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. So that means if you're obese, then you've got a larger volume that can absorb vitamin D out of your circulation. So your blood levels of vitamin D will be inversely related to your level of tissue adiposity. And this is true. So we've actually got some studies where we expose people to sunlight or we give them vitamin D supplements. And we find that the level of increment of the vitamin D levels within their serum is impaired if they have excess fat. So basically the fat tissue acts as a sink and draws vitamin D out of the circulation. So therefore, if you lose weight or if you have less body fat, then your vitamin D levels are going to be greater. So vitamin D level can be a surrogate marker for good metabolic health, for, for low fat levels. And this is perfectly consistent with the research and the science we have on coronavirus. We know that um, obese individuals are more likely to suffer complications from coronavirus and that people in good metabolic health who are, who are lean are more likely to survive. So vitamin D in effect can just be a surrogate marker for that. So then there's several other questions that arise. So let's talk about uh, sunlight. So everybody says, well, you need to go into the sun to get your vitamin D. Well, is this historically true? We've got, you know, a large proportion of the world with pigmented skin that doesn't generate vitamin D very well. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense that people with white skin would have such a, a strong evolutionary advantage from being able to produce vitamin D. That just doesn't make logical sense. Why? And, and indeed, we don't see it. We don't see a massive difference between longevity, between people of different skin pigmentations. So the reason is that historically, if we look at the Inuit population, so they've got pigmented skin and they, uh, they don't really ever see the sun. So when they were first studied, you know, back nearly 100 years ago, they were found to have, uh, actually, I'm not sure exactly when the study was, might have been 90 years ago, um, they were found to have quite adequate vitamin D levels. Why? Where did they get the vitamin D from? So remember, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. Well, it's in the fat of animals that we consume as well. So if you're having a lot of animal produce, then you're consuming vitamin D. It's only in more modern times that we consider you need sun exposure to actually get vitamin D. Because historically, when we weren't afraid of saturated fats in food, we could get all the vitamin D we needed from diet. So that, that's a very natural way. You can get all the vitamin D you need from diet. So then why do we produce it when we go into the sun? And why only pale people? Why not 
dark skinned people, why don't they produce much vitamin D? So vitamin D has actually been synthesized as a sunscreen for 500 million years in phytoplankton. So this is something that is absolutely huge. It's just the right size shape and size of a molecule that will absorb the ultraviolet B rays that would normally damage the DNA of our cells. So our bodies actually synthesize vitamin D as a sunscreen. And that's such a bizarre concept, but we're, we've got a lot of proof for that as well. So when you think about it, the body's producing 50,000 units of vitamin D in an afternoon, the sun exposure, that's clearly in excess of what we need to produce for health. It's only producing that much to try and protect you, to try and prevent you from getting sunburn. So vitamin D production in, in response to UVB exposure is nothing more than a protection against sunburn. So Ansel Key's seven countries study, they actually had a subset of the, the study where they actually looked at uh, cholesterol levels in people who are exposed to the sun and they found that their cholesterol levels were lower. Now, why? Because vitamin D is made from serum cholesterol. So necessarily people with more cholesterol can make more vitamin D and therefore they'll be better protected from the sun. And this is the experience that we see in the ketogenic community. We have a lot of people say, mm. I can go into the sun and I don't burn like I used to. And, you know, we make all these arguments about, you know, H&E and all this kind of stuff in vegetable oils. So that's not the case. It's your ability. It's the plant sterols play a role because if you have plant sterols, remember I said that impairs the natural functions, the biochemical functions that cholesterol is needed for, one of which is to synthesize effective vitamin D as a sunscreen. But basically, if you have higher cholesterol levels, you can produce more vitamin D and you'll be better protected against the sun. And by not having fake plant cholesterol in that mix to, to muck up your vitamin D synthesis, you'll also, that will lead to a better protection as well. So this very premise that, you know, you need to go into the sun to get your vitamin D, no, you need a healthy diet to get your vitamin D. And this is the whole point that people are taking, you know, buckets of vitamin D supplements saying it's going to make me healthy. No, vitamin D is a surrogate marker for good health. If you have a high vitamin D level that's coming from a healthy lifestyle, that's arising from the fact that you consume a lot of healthy foods rich in vitamin D, then that's associated with good health. If you've got a very high vitamin D level because you, you have a bucket of it every night, well, so what? That doesn't necessarily prove that you've got a healthy lifestyle. There's not necessarily a, a direct correlation between healthy lifestyle and levels of vitamin D in somebody who supplements. So that's why I generally don't recommend that people supplement as long as they've got a modicum of an acceptable vitamin D level, I generally recommend that they don't need to supplement with vitamin D. And I'd prefer to see them get uh, adequate vitamin D stores through a healthy lifestyle.